fixing the money thing. Today, we continue Gary's series, The Power of Your Words, and his message, Fear is a Lie. So when you speak on behalf of the Lord, you speak his word, guess what you sound like? You sound like Jesus. Same authority, same twang, same everything. The devil can't tell it's you. In fact, the Bible says, submit to God, resist him, and he'll flee in terror. That word terror in the Greek means run in terror. It means submit him and he'll flee, run in terror. Because it sounds like it's the same authority of God himself when you speak. So listen, I've said this many times, stop begging and stop wishing Jesus would come and tell you how to deal with things. You don't, listen, you already have everything. But if Jesus would just show up in my bedroom, he'd tell me what to do. He put the spirit of God in you, friend, to be your counselor. That's what the book of John says. He already gave you his authority, his spirit, his word, the entire kingdom. You already have it all. You have the authority to speak. You have been anointed and set in a place to reign and rule in life. But here's the danger. Probably most Christians, at least a large majority of them, do not know this. They spend their life begging God to do something, waiting on God to show up and fix their problem, heal their bodies, I mean, when someone's sick, do you hear them talking to their body or talking to God? Hmm? The Bible says in Mark chapter 11 that if you believe in your heart what God says and you speak and then you believe what you speak, you shall, you sh you shall speak to the mountain and it will be moved for you. For you? Who does that? Well, that's, that's God's people. That's those angels. Now, we can't boss angels around. They're the king's angels, but Jesus said, I could have called. And you can, God will put angels on assignment to back his word up. So Satan knows that most people don't understand that they hold the keys to the kingdom. They're waiting on God. They'll celebrate, cheer, praise God, clap their hands, but they don't know that they have a part to play because they have the ring. They have the keys, but no one's ever taught them how to turn the car on or how to drive it. They know how to come to church, but they've never been taught they are the church. I remember we had a lady, a uh, friend of ours uh, for a number of years, she, she helped drain with some things. And she was always talking about her house she was afraid of her house burning down. I thought this is weird. Her house is perfectly fine. And she's always afraid that her house is gonna burn down. And it did, <laughs> it did, it burned down one day. She did not realize what she was doing. She was, listen, how does a king rule? Now the Bible says we're seated, right? We're seated. How does a king rule? He decrees. He decrees. We're seated. We speak. See, prayer by itself doesn't release the anointing, doesn't release the power of God. You have that jurisdiction. I remember in our early days of our church, Elijah, who you stand up, Elijah, was singing up here in the front. His cousin, Joel, and your family, Elijah, his family and his cousins were together and Joel, who was four years old, was missing from the luncheon. And so they went looking for him and they had an in-ground swimming pool and they found Joel at the bottom of the pool, motionless. No one knew how long he was there. Joel's mom, Elijah's aunt, and his sister, Courtney, so his, Joel's mom and Courtney walked out and found him in the pool. Of course, Tina, your aunt, she, as any mom, she, she cried out, you know, call 911, right? And she dove in, got him up, but he's motionless. 
But Courtney, this, I think she's like 12, is that right? Around 12 or 13, 13, said to her aunt, his sister said to his aunt, Joel's mom, no, Aunt Tina, we don't need to call 911. We have authority here. This is a child having more revelation than most adults. And we need to pray. So they begin to pray in the spirit. Of course, praying in the spirit, you know, you, God's gonna bring revelation what to do. Nothing happened to Joel. I mean, he, he's still out. So Tina, the mom is like, you know, we gotta call 911. And this 13 year old says, no, we need to speak life to him. And she said, in the name of Jesus, Joel, wake up. And he instantly woke up, spit the water out, and it's fine today. Now notice, prayer did not release the authority. But I believe that prayer in that moment, your mind's swirling as they're praying in the spirit, the Holy Spirit's nudging Courtney, you gotta finish this out now. You've acknowledged the authority, you acknowledge we have authority, but you've gotta finish this out now. You gotta got cross the T and dot the I. You gotta speak it now, you gotta release it. You know it's there, but you gotta release it. Oh, Aunt Tina, we gotta we got speak life. We have to speak now to release this authority and in the name of bam. So you got the ring, you got the ring. But so many people don't know they have the ring. They don't know they're seated in heavenly places. They're still kind of scrapping by, trying to make things, you know, just hoping it works out, begging God, hoping God shows up. He already showed up, friend, that's the key. He's already done, He's, it's over, you got it all. <laughs> James chapter three, James tells us about our words Uh, let me mention this. Christians have this thought, it's, it's time to pray. Father, da, da, da. okay, and prayer's good. But we think that speaking spiritual words are something we turn on and turn off. What you don't realize is that you are constantly decreeing things, meaning that you don't choose now I'm going to decree my freedom or my, you know, whatever it is. I'm going to decree my healing. No, you've been talking about your body for a long time. You've been talking about a lot of things. And just because you say, now I'm going to speak in. No, no, no. You have the position. Friend, you're already in the position. You're already speaking. You're already decreeing. And you're already receiving what you're decreeing. And this is why James talks about this. He says in James 3, 3, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they're so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of shipwrecked people out there. Somehow, you know, I counsel people, they, they think we're going this direction, they end up over here. How did that happen? If they don't know how this works, you know who they blame, don't you? They blame God. Oh, his word doesn't work. It says, you know, I'm supposed to be over here, but this is what happened. Listen, you need to check your compass. Something happened in the compass. Something happened, right? Shipwrecked. It reminds me of the first time that God got my attention with this principle. See, you're decreeing every day. You're either agreeing with fear and speaking it into your life, or you're agreeing with God and speaking it into your life. You're, you're decreeing, because you have the position. You understand what I'm saying? You have the position. It's not like one day you decide just to jump in, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going to decree now. No, you have been decreeing all that time. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.